is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Get real. No. No. Nope. This just is stop. a sham. It's finally here. Drum roll. Welcome to DBL. It's Friday, everybody. And Sam Shocker is in the house. Yes. We made it through the week. Yes. We made it. I can't stand it. I know you I do. Can't stand I know you don't like it. That's why I Wait, say the it. phrase, we made it through the week? Yeah. He doesn't uh, like enjoy it. every day. Oh, that's a good point. I got like something each day. Like Monday or Tuesday, I get home and I watch Below Deck. <laughs> Thursdays, I get home from work. Vandy's Vandy. night from Wednesday. You know what I mean? Everything's got a little flavor. Right, you're Everything's right. Everything's got a little flavor. All right. Speaking of flavor, the verdict is in. After an eight-day trial, a jury, jury ruled in favor of Gwyneth Paltrow and found her not liable for a ski crash that happened back in 2016. It took over just two hours for the jury to decide. They also awarded Gwyneth $1 in damages for her countersuit. Terry, the plaintiff, will also have a have to pay Gwyneth's legal bills which is going to be a hefty bill, I would imagine. Yeah. In a statement, Gwen had said, quote, I felt that <laughs> acquiescing, yep. I already, I wish she was guilty because of that word, <laughs> is, uh, is false claim, is, to a false claim, compromise my integrity. I hate you now, Gwyneth. <laughs> After the verdict, Gwyneth walked over to Terry, leaned in, and said something to him. Terry told reporters, she said, I wish you well, and that he responded, thank you, dear. Hmm. hmm. She said, "Acquiesce to these legal charges, baby." <laughs> yeah. This, look, it, this this is. Uh, I feel like this really might be the second time that we're going to see this celebrity on trial be vindicated and see a bump in their popularity. All of a sudden, stuff from Goop is flying off the shelves. Tori, who is a notorious GP, I wouldn't call you a hater. I just call you. GP you're not hater. a fan, right? And even she kind of swayed you. She she came at this with integrity. From just day one. A dollar. From day one. And, it, and she seems to be vindicated. And I think it's going to show in, in sales. Not only that, she wore goop things and had them on her uh, website. Just like Rihanna during the halftime, she took out her Fenty powder. Her sales went up by 838%. Plus, she was a class act. Yeah. Like the fact that afterwards that she came and wished him well, even though she could have been filled with anger. I mean, you've been in a similar situation. It didn't go to court. But when somebody is taking advantage of you and trying Trying to not only take your money, malign you in the media, and really he did it for fame, in my opinion, to say I wish you well, that's a big person. Yeah. I don't know if I could. Could you? Yeah, after I won? <laughs> for <laughs> sure. You would say hey, I wish you well? Good luck, yeah. buddy. By the way, my lawyers, <laughs> the <laughs> best in the biz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it went on from 2019, so that's four years of lawyers. Uh, I do want to show you guys a clip here. This is GMA interviewed a juror for the trial, and she said she believed Gwyneth's version. Let's take a look at that. I think, you know, there was in the back of my mind, yes, this woman's an actress, and, you know, I took that into account. Um, but I, I didn't feel that she had a reason to lie under oath. She's always in the spotlight, so she always has to be honest. She also said, uh, the juror said, Terry's vacation picks that you found did not help. Little, little Columbo Sam, well, should yeah, have hired me. To, Good job, clap Sam. Sam. You called I'll this it, yes. a week ago, and everybody's like, oh, well, maybe. But you saw something. What did you see? <laughs> Because I didn't see that his vacation picks would be I love Al's questions. What did you see? I just listened. A camel. As I've said, You've a covered of, a lot of these. I've covered a lot of cases for CNN and HLN. And for me, again, when somebody is stressing in the affidavit that they cannot do anything physically, that they are emotionally depressed, that they are, uh, to me, I know depression. You don't get out of bed. I know people with ailments. You don't go take 10 trips in the last handful of years. You don't go whitewater the... rafting. <laughs> you don't, so go, that you don't do that when you you're at the peak I of your health. I love whitewater rafting. Oh, okay, Rapids 5. I don't even know what that is. That's a class of Rapids. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, all eyes are on Tori. I mean, on the Gwyneth trial. <laughs> or should we say Gwyneth's fashion trial? So, Sam, you're yes. our Colombo. You're now our yes. fashionista. You want to take it oh, away? Oh, I'm so ready for this because I loved and lived for her fashion. All right, so, so Jeff, some people online called her looks quiet luxury or, this is my favorite, stealth wealth. Ooh. Like what? this cream, oversized sweater she wore on day one. Loved it. Stealth wealth. Yes, yeah, stealth wealth. That was outside the courtroom. She also covered it up with this $5,000 olive green wool blend felt coat, coat as she was fly. exiting the courtroom. Then on day Color three, money. ah, Tori, yes. Then on day three, it was this double-breasted gray blazer. Fantastic. And a $25,000 18 karat 
yellow gold chain. Beautiful. Day four, she took the stand in this Navy mm. Prada cashmere polo shirt and skirt. The next day, she continued my favorite, the goth trend. Oh, wow. Wednesday, Adams yeah. times 10, yeah. obsessed. So she was in this black and white ensemble with these $1,400 chunky combat boots, which I own a knockoff pair of. Yes, I do. <laughs> On day six, Gwyneth was pretty in pink with this uh, Camilla bow blouse. I'm not sure if I said that right. From her own goop line, to Tori's point earlier, trying to make some moolah, yes, and wide leg pants and a $1,200 pair of tan boots and on the final day of testimony a lot of people love this it was just Gwyneth wearing this navy corduroy jacket very simple very classy although it was a thousand dollars which is now sold out online mm. she played everybody yeah this became her fashion show it became the Gwyneth show and you know what good on her she's allowed she was in the right and good on her for saying I know you hate the word acquiesce for saying I, if I Ooh. gave I know <laughs> if I I'll change it if I gave up I would feel bad with my integrity. I, that makes me like her more. I appreciate that. And, uh, you know, I don't like her hoity-toity. I find her a little pretentious, or a lot. But for her, for this trial, go GP. Yeah, I, I, I'm on your side. Yeah. I'm joking around about the acquiescing because I don't like reading the prompter as it is and <laughs> throw a word in that. You don't I like hate it. you. <laughs> but I do like her. I like uh, that she's... First of all, it's embarrassing to go through a trial like this again. I question the judge. She had to walk in every day. Good for her. Put it on her stage. She did that Johnny Depp switcheroo. She sure did. Change, did she change your mind? She, oh, yeah. And, and to be honest, I was like, ugh, Gwyneth. And now I'm like, I'm glad she sued for a dollar. So good for her. I really did. She did switch. I still don't love Goop and her jade eggs. But I like you keep bringing that up. They're I know hard. they don't sell those anymore. Well, she was sued for medical. It's malpractice. almost yes. like Tori but wanted to get a jade egg and couldn't <laughs> right. yeah. at the time afford it. No, which it I wouldn't have been able to at too. At the time. Well, yeah, she was working at the ice cream store at the time. Oh, oh Tori was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought you were talking about here because I'm like I'm still can't afford it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, good job with the fashion segment. Very You're good. Welcome. Very good. Thank very you. good. I thought we were going to commercial, but apparently not. The trial, which at times played like an SNL skit, also sparked millions. Millions of memes after the verdict. Someone created this meme of Gwyneth laughing on the stand, writing, Someone celebrating with two cups of bone broth. Tori, did you write this? Referring to her wellness diet that went viral. Another meme spoofed her movie poster for oh. sliding doors with sliding down. The tagline There are two sides to every story, but she loses half a day of skiing in both of them. That was actually pretty good. I do like that one. And another person wrote, We are now consciously uncoupled. I want my $1 in cash. Mm -hmm. I love this is what I do not understand about how we 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 judge certain people like people go I love Lizzo she's so real she's so authentic but Gwyneth seems like she's always being her, her authentic self and you're like I don't like that she's so hoity-toity that's how some people roll you see how she came into the court she's classy her it, it tracks with the the stuff that she sells it tr her her whole persona is like yeah I step it up but why is that why, why wouldn't I, it be weirder if she was like, hey, I'm just like you guys. Yes, I wear an old yes. Navy sweatshirt. And just to, I like yes. her keeping it real to her reality. Now, I like that too. But when you say, what's your wellness routine? And you say, I skip breakfast and eat bone broth most lunches. I find that really dangerous to put out as a possible diet of wellness. Again, she didn't recommend it, so I can't sue her or say that's wrong, but people listen to Gwyneth as someone that they look up to, and you can't sustain yourself, really, unless you're being watched by several doctors with bone broth. But, yeah, but she but, eats other things. Well, you can yeah, sustain yourself on one meal a day. On one meal a day, you think for most people that's healthy. I think you can. And also, I, just don't I think, think that's anybody that anybody who says three meals a day is so great. <laughs> the Tori, you want to stand right now? I, I know. Feel like I'm like, oh my god. I, I feel no, like I the food like pyramid. The, the, the overall said concept. Of no, her. because I love I love like trendy things and trying new things. Right. But, and you keep going after this bone broth. <laughs> I, she's not like you know. It's not crazy. It's not just crazy. Me. The, the country reacted when she's like, I don't eat breakfast and I eat bone broth and then I dry brush, whatever. But that it, doesn't seem like it's before an the answer. bone broth. What she says, it? I don't know. What was it before the bone the jade broth? The eggs. And what was it before the jade eggs? The goop, I guess. I just, I found <laughs> she, I find she recommends things that are not healthy and puts it off as it's hoity toity and pretentious when it actually could be harmful to your health. And she's been sued for many, many things. <laughs> sounds like you're not on It Gwen. sounds like you're not. <laughs> no, but I am with the skiing thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we love Gwen. Congratulations. Yeah, Coming up on time. DBL, <laughs> our interview with Tony Collette and John Liquidzamo, thinking of people. Um, whatever, just read it. <laughs> They're telling us all about their new thriller series, and Padma Lakshmi is taking Kourtney Kardashian side <sighs> in the bathtub. Ew, disgusting. Picnic debate. Would you ever rub a dub dub in the tub <laughs> with a sub? Did you write that? <laughs> <laughs>
Somebody roll the clip. Let's make sure we have Jeff's sex tape. Wow, things are getting spicy here. At <laughs> Cold hearted snake, look into his eyes. Let's that roll that again, right. everybody. <laughs> Jeff? Yeah, I was how, laughing. How happy were you to come Well, I was that? laughing over there when I was writing it. I go, this is the best part of my Friday. <laughs> Oh my God, they make dub, sense to me. Dub. Listen, the here's tub. the thing. I don't like working, I don't hate the prompter, okay? I hated it from the beginning. I still hate it, but I worked hard on it, right? Yeah. And now I'm you to the point hard. where I take things out and I put my own like little flavor in there. So it doesn't make sense, my English, okay? But they, when I write it, they change it. And I almost memorize what I'm reading. So when they add something in there, like you added, you added uh, the thing Aaron's about- You're in trouble now. No, you added that thing about also the lawyer bills. Yes. So I have that in my head, right? So when I, I almost memorized the prompter, so when I go, it was $1, and in my head, I'm like, now you're cued to say also lawyer fees. When they put it in there and they don't tell me, I trip over it. Mm -hmm. And that's when, and then I get really upset with myself about tripping over it. Oh my No, it's God. not, no, it's not. <laughs> but then they, all, blame the producer. No, and then during the it's meetings. It's always the producer's fault. It's never the anchor. It's no. definitely my the fault, host. definitely my fault. No. And then when no. I do the morning meetings, I'm like. I just can't believe it. Um, I'm like, hey, change fault. the T's. They all look at each other like, Pfft. This guy. Well, I'm like, was, listen, just don't touch it. If it, if I mess up, it's on me. It's on don't touch it. I was like, and if it doesn't make sense, it makes sense in my house. I was like, we better check that. Was that. Was it's, it's not, not your fault. I love you. But by the way, rub a dub dub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get a job with a sub. Excellent job. That was fantastic. I don't know if it was excellent. It was my favorite cheese of the week by far. Yeah, very, very good. I loved it. I don't like what it is. It's a comedy. I tried to like, it's not a serious series. I didn't hear you. The Watergate. Thing, if we get to, it it's a comedy. Yeah, I mean, it's a total is it that's where all that stuff eventually oh, goes. Yeah. It's like I'm Jesus, and I also it's need. In Welcome back. Some celebrities are going viral for a new trend, and that's eating in the bathtub. Kourtney Kardashian, Kourtney Kardashian recently posted a shot looking down at her tub with foods like strawberries, Ugh. champagne surrounding it. Nasty. It's on the floor, though. It's I don't disgusting. like that. There's also what looks like a half-eaten sandwich on the toilet. All right. That looks like it should be police tape. Yeah, it's no like, good. What's the red tub? It's no good. Padma Lakshmi also got in on the trend and shared this picture of her eating pasta and drinking white wine in the tub. I'm not I'm not against that. What do we think? Hers is a little bit better because she has the tray yeah, yeah. and yes. it's very yeah, yeah. organized. Yeah. The disorganization of Courtney Kardashian. I'm going to go on a limb here and you know I love Courtney. We love Courtney. Car. I think, Car. <laughs> I think the Kardashians are on their way out. I think you're right. I think people are starting to. That's a strong statement. When was the last time that we've seen anything trend about the Kardashians? As soon as Kim hooks up with somebody, we'll, we'll cover it for two months. Maybe. But you know who else is trending on that? She's right. Northwest is doing very well on her whatever. TikTok? And people have said they are now grooming the kids wow. to be because the Kardashians, they're sort of boring. When I watch, they're like, let's uh, eat more salads. I can't. I want to have salads. They shake their salads. There's no like drama. Mm, so wow. now it's so boring. Really, so um, Northwest and those kids are now the up and coming Kardashians. I want to talk about the tub. <laughs> let's get let's get into it. Here's my issue, Jeff. I don't mind. It's it looks aesthetically pleasing to have champagne and grapes and whatever pasta. But she, it looks great when everything's going well. But for me, Sam, if any part of that pasta gets in the tub <laughs> and it's floating now, yeah. my whole experience is over because I'm like, I can't, I, I can't be I'm in that soup. tub. I'm in a suit. Yeah, it's just like it would bother me. I'd be like, oh, where is it? Now I'm reaching for like a little piece of lettuce. I don't like it. There should never be food not in lettuce. the bathroom. That's <laughs> There should never be food in the bathroom. It's like There's, the the Seinfeld episode with Kramer in the shower. Yeah, he makes a salad in the That's shower. That's all I thought about during the <laughs> That's meeting. That's hilarious. Did you do this? I, the second, the, you're, the I Padma get you one? with the, no, with the Courtney thing. Yeah. 
on their way out, that was really trying. Yeah. Yes. Because the food was all over the floor. Yeah. And Padma the making it look, I'm all down for eating in the tub, especially like fruits and champagne and things like that. That's all good. That's mm. fun. But like the sandwich on the toilet. <laughs> that's disgusting. I love sandwiches, but come on. Let's stop beating what around the butch. Like butch? bathtubs. The butch. Stink. What's the butch? <laughs> the the butch. butch. Should we beat I around it <laughs> Yes. Yes. I said butch. And also, <laughs> bathtubs <laughs> are terrible. Yeah, I don't just like your, baths. You're right. It's your filth. They're, you're sitting yes, in your you're filth. Sitting in, in mop water. Are no. we, bathtubs are amazing. They're but disgusting. Are we not forgetting <laughs> when water. you were in that um, video? Oh is there champagne? Cause, so there's a video floating around of Jeff in a hot tub. Oh, it's Dude. floating around here, Sam. <laughs> it's, 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 it's anytime we can get a anytime we get a chance to play that video. Food involved? I forget. No. There's no, no champagne. There no just strawberries bubbles. with was, chocolate. I, not that I recall. I don't, and she was wasn't there? in the tub. I don't I think there was. I think there's champagne and strawberries and chocolate involved, but I could be wrong. Now, here's a quick oh question because I've never shot anything in a bathtub, Jeff. <laughs> When you're doing a shoot like this, you know, like, oh, that's a do, are you yeah. sure? <laughs> when, you, when you're doing stuff like that, do they get you in and out of the tub in between shoots, or are you just sitting there from take to take? Oh, yeah, that's a good question. Because that's a lot of, like, so, that's a lot of tub time. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> Fridays are the best. <laughs> but uh, if you haven't seen the video, I'm sure we'll play it at some point. But she was supposed to be in the tub, and she it's dropped Jeff, Jeff. glass on her foot, and she had to get stitches. Oh, so they're like, Jeff, you go in the tub. <laughs> but how that's why I was in the, in the tub? tub. Did you get wrinkly fingers? Was it cold? cold? No, it was, it was cold. cold. I was going to say, cold? the okay. shower scene was cold. It was a hose was from outside, <laughs> and it was nighttime, and they were spraying it on my back. So like, I was like, so when people think, like, is it sexy? It's no, not. It's not. I don't know how we got on this. <laughs> But I was, were you in shorts? I was in shorts. Or were you naked? I was in shorts. You were in shorts. But you couldn't see them. Yeah. Oh, wow. But then they'd just be like action, and they'd be like, the freezing water, and I just had to be like this, and I was like, oh my God, we gotta go, thank God. Coming up on DBL, we talk with a real actor, John Liquidzamo and Tony Collette. They're telling us what it was like working on their new show, The Power. The wheels on the bus go round and round, and apparently the three lines on the side of the bus have a purpose. Bob Deuce shared this Facebook post. It says, quote, the three black lines on the school buses serve a purpose. The bottom line is the floor of the bus. The middle line is the seat line. The top black line is the top of the seats. These lines of the bus are reinforced, but they also let firefighters know where to cut in case of an accident. Is this true? Let's verify. Part of this viral post is true, but it needs context. My sources are Captain Eric Prosswimmer with Jacksonville Fire and Rescue, Student Transportation of America, and the Florida Department of Education. Prosswimmer explains that the main purpose of the black lines is not for them to know where to cut, but it could help. The black lines are called rub rails. According to Florida DOE bus specifications, they are required on all buses. They must be black and they must be on specific areas of the bus at seat level, floor line, and bottom of the outer skirt. Student Transportation of America, which provides buses to school districts around the country, sent a statement saying, quote, while the lines generally line up with specific areas on the school bus, their main purpose is protection in the event of side impact or rollover. Prosswimmer says if a school bus was involved in a crash, firefighters would prefer to use the emergency door on the back or the emergency windows. Prosswimmer tells me if necessary, the rub rails could inform firefighters on where to cut into the bus because they identify structural members. But that is not their main purpose. Leah Shields, First Coast News, on your side. Welcome back to DBL. She's an Oscar nominated actress and he has one of the most recognizable voices in Hollywood. Earlier we spoke with Tony Collette and John Liquidzamo about their new series, The Power. Take a look. Mom, I know someone can like aim it. How does yours work? Hey. Please welcome to the show Tony Collette and John Liquidzamo. Yeah. Hey, hey. Hey, how are you? Hey, how are you? 
Tony. Hello, <laughs> hello. Um, Tony, you said that you shot the entire season for The Power in five weeks. John's a funny guy. So did he make the crazy shooting schedule easier or harder for you, Tony? Oh, <laughs> way easier. This guy's a legend. I loved working with him. Honestly, he made it so fun. He's so talented. He brought so much. He's completely open and present and alive and happy to, you know, play and improvise. And it was kind. always fun. Such a pleasure. A I was so excited to work with Tony. I couldn't wait. I, I, for the first day to shoot, because I've always been a big fan of her. And we've never met each other. Never oh, met. really? Oh, wow. No, and you can never determine no. the chemistry between people, but it was just yeah. so easy. Yeah. Sometimes you don't have chemistry, totally. and, you, and it's really hard to fake that stuff. Yeah, it's but me we, and Jeff. We don't have chemistry. any of that. None. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I gotta, <laughs> a, a, as a father of a 16-year-old teenage daughter, this means a lot to me. The teen girls in this show have a, have the special power of electricity. But what would like both of you guys? What would your superpower have been in high school? I, I would like to have like um, been invisible, maybe. In high school, I, 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 too, I had that. It's a little pervy. It's a little pervy. It's a little pervy. It's a little I take it back. A little, I, I, I like to be. Uh, I like to read minds. Ooh. Ooh, that could be trouble. Ooh, I was about to say that could be good and bad. The truth of what's going on. Really? Yes. Oh, I, I don't know. I want to know. know. Yeah, I'd rather <laughs> ignorance is bliss. I'd rather <laughs> not know what they're saying about me. Yeah, I think you're right. I think, I think it's too harsh. Right. Too harsh. All right, John. We're gonna get to it. I know we're not supposed to talk about Bruno, but there's a lot of us with children who love Encanto. But you had a rap solo in Encanto, and also you do a little rapping in this series. So is this a hidden talent of yours, John? Yeah, it, it definitely hidden. That's for sure. Because <laughs> nobody's offering me a, con a rap contract coming up. Uh, and, you know, I went to school with Q-Tip, who, oh. who obviously teaches Tribe Called Quest. Yep. And, and when he sees this, he might be a little upset. With me. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, you also released a couple uh, an album a couple of years ago. Is there any singing on set for you? I a couple of years ago. I think it was 2006. It's quite some time ago. Yeah. Well, I, I think I it's think time. It's, I think it's time to pump some life back yes. in an album. You guys should do a little collab, a little job ja rule, the Shante <laughs> duet. <laughs> <laughs> Tip, tip, top, so socialize. Clean out your ears and open your eyes. I'm not taking over. Oh. <laughs> that was, that was that pretty good. good. We'll that take that. We'll oh take my that. gosh, I love it. Um, okay, so, so John, you wear so many hats. Uh, something that I think we need to talk about because it's so cool. You are the first Latino to host The Daily Show. Yeah. 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 yeah, John. Congratulations. What does that mean to you? And do you ever get nervous when you have a live audience? Uh, I mean, I'm so excited to be on The Daily Show because I've been a huge fan of The Daily Show forever uh, and so glad to be a part of it. Uh, uh, you know, it's great being the first and sometimes it's like, why do we always have to be the first? Right. Why hasn't this happened a long time ago? But I'm going to bring a lot of Latin uh, guests. Uh, I'm going to do a lot of Latin content. Yes. And uh, I'm going to bring it. And I'm especially glad to be hosting during Hispanic Heritage Month. <laughs> It's not Hispanic Heritage Month. That's in September. <laughs> Come on, that was a test, y'all. DBO Nation, the first three episodes of The Power are streaming yes. on Prime Video today. Don't miss it. Thank you so much, John and Tony. We'll be right back. Very Thanks, talented, you guys. Thanks, guys. And as violent crime continues, some say hiring more police officers is the solution. Uh, when we have, have more police officers, crime does go down. So, let's verify. Do more police officers result in less crime? Our sources, the United States Department of Justice, the Memphis Police Department, the Vera Institute, a research organization that studies mass incarceration and policing, and the Memphis Crime Commission. A recent Vera study found that increases in the size of big city police departments coincides with declining crime and homicide rates. But... When it comes to southern cities with large black populations like Memphis, that impact can be smaller. In a post-George Floyd, post-Tyree Nichols era, to have public relations so that we can bridge the gap between community and police departments. According to FBI and DOJ data, in Memphis in 2015, there were 21 murders per 100,000 residents. In 2016, that number climbed to 30 and stayed that way for a few years and then spiked again to 44 per 100,000 residents in 2020. 
This all occurring as nearly 40% of Memphis's city budget goes to policing and public safety, which is more funding than cities like Nashville or Louisville. So yes, increasing the size of a police force by offering better incentives like higher pay and expanded benefits can lead to a decline in crime rates. But the Department of Justice found that was only successful based on the organizational style of the police department, meaning the more visible police officers are in the community, the more likely there is to be a decrease in crime. With your Verify, I'm Jay Shakur. In April, Twitter is winding down its blue checkmark verification for public figures. That's left celebrities like Monica Lewinsky worried about impersonators on the platform. One journalist warned it's a crime in some states to impersonate someone on social media. So let's verify. Is that true? Our sources are the National Conference of State Legislatures, Cronenberger Rosenfeld, and several state laws. Every state has laws that protect against identity theft and false impersonation. Eight states have laws that directly mention social media impersonation, while the rest have broader rules that could include online actions. Generally, the laws criminalize defrauding, intimidating, or threatening someone by pretending to be someone else. For example, Texas makes it a felony punishable by up to 10 years in prison if you harass a person online by impersonation, specifically including social media websites. The laws don't criminalize satire or parody accounts if it's reasonably clear that the account doesn't belong to the person being parodied. Although none of the laws make a clear distinction between parody and harm, leaving the difference up to a court's interpretation. So yes, it is illegal in some states to impersonate someone on social media in certain circumstances. Whether you're Verify, I'm Brandon Lewis. I love Fridays. Welcome back. If you're washing your car this weekend, there are some things you can do to get as clean as possible. That's today's auto alert sponsored by Ox Car Care. First up, use a clean cloth every time. Next, never let your car air dry. Water spots can damage the finish over time. And finally, if you are waxing, don't use too much. A little goes a long way. Ox Car Care is dedicated to providing you with an amazing auto protection plan experience that works with your budget. If you're looking for better car care, give them a call today. 800-946-5040. Jeff, we were talking about just a clean car. It's it's just it's a real thing when you get into your car and it's really nice and clean. It's a good way to start your weekend. Al yeah. got in my car yesterday and about died. Yeah, you know, I was you know what else is fine. you know what else is it's clean? Not. Big Jeff in this video. Oh what, yeah, check this out before no, we go. No, not the tub. Oh, oh my. <laughs> <laughs> there's the tub. No Stand champagne. Pills. No strawberries. Uh, just you and. <laughs> <laughs> the thigh rub. The thigh rub. Oh my Let's see goodness. the wink. Is the wink? I like the wink. It started it off her. with the wink. Oh. Have a good wink end, everybody. <laughs> that was good. All right. Keep your eye on the green screen. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Bye.